Hello, tonight I want to ask a question. Can God conquer death? You know, many people are afraid about death and this, this death in this world. And I just want to know, is there any solace? Is there any comfort anywhere? Is it possible that God can conquer death? Well, let me tell you what it says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same, and through death he destroyed him that had the power of death, which is the devil. Jesus took on human form so he could identify with your problems and your ailments and my problems and my ailments, and he conquered death by conquering the devil. Yeah. So the question tonight is, can God conquer death? Well, let me give you some clues. Let me tell you what God did at the fiery furnace. Of course, you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were bound and they were thrown into the fiery furnace for not bowing down and worshiping an idol god. Even the fire was so hot that when they threw them in, the men that threw them in were consumed by the fire. And this is what it said in Daniel 3.23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and he arose in haste and spake and said to his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto you, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they that have, and they have no hurt, and the fourth man is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the fire, burning fiery furnace, and spake and said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, You servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither, and the governors and the captains and the kings of the council being gathered together. And saw these men upon whom bodies that the fire had no power and no, was not a hair on their heads singed, and neither were they coats charged, changed, and they didn't even smell like smoke. This is an example that God can conquer death. Oh, you know, you think you're just reading a, a quaint story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But what God is showing you is that death has no power if he wants to conquer it. And I know we're going through some the vicissitudes of life right now with this virus, some ups and downs, but I want you to know that God can conquer death. Man. Of course, you remember the cross. Let me give you another example. You remember the cross. And the Bible is clear. It says, uh, Cursed is any man that hangs on the cross. And in 1 Corinthians 1.18, the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But to us, which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring nothing to the understanding of the prudence. That's why he said in Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a cross. Guess who hanged on a cross for you? And guess who hung on a cross for me? It was Christ. Yeah. And you would think, hey, once you die on a cross, such a horrific death, that that would be over with. It would be uh, finished. There would be nothing else to talk about. But the Bible said in Matthew 19 and verse 17, and him bearing his cross went forth to the place called a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where he, they crucified him with two on each side of Jesus in the midst. They crucified him that was supposed to be over it. But let me tell you what he says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. What God did for Jesus is raised him from the dead. Amen. And I want you to know tonight, God can conquer death. He can conquer your death. He can conquer my death. He can conquer all of our death. And these are not just idle stories in the Bible. These are given for examples for you to realize that there's no other God but one God. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's the one who raised Jesus from the dead. That's why he said in Galatians 6.14, 
But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of Jesus Christ, who by the world is crucified unto me and unto the world. Through the cross is what reconciled us, Ephesians 2.16, that we might be reconciled both unto God and one body by the cross, who slain the enemy thereby. Oh, the cross at one time, it looked like it was the darkest hour, but you know what it turned into? The brightest hour. Amen. Oh, the cross at one time looked like Satan was going to have the victory, but you know what happened? Satan was defeated. Man. Oh, the cross displayed hatred on one side because an innocent man was crucified. But on the other side, it showed love because God loved the world so much mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Oh, on the cross, on one side, it looked like life was being lost. But what it was on the other side is life was being saved. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cross is, the, is a symbol for you, and the cross is a symbol for me. But it shows that God can conquer death. And if ever we needed to know that, we needed to know it now mm -hmm. with all the things that are going on in this world. But you thought you were just reading the Bible. Let me give you another example. You remember the bronze serpent? You remember the children of Israel were in the wilderness as that they were traveling, they were murmuring and complaining, and because of that, God brought some fiery serpents upon them. You know what fiery means is venomous. He brought these venomous serpents upon them. And the serpents were biting the people, and the people came running to Moses, and they asked Moses in Numbers 21 and verse uh, 5. Numbers 21 and verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses, wherefore he hath brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, for there is no bread, and neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit them, and much people of Israel died. Therefore came them to Moses and said, We have sinned, and we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray thee unto the Lord that he take away these serpents from us. And Moses prayed, and the people, and the people, and the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon them. Make thee the brass fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it come to pass that everyone that is bitten, looketh upon it, shall live. Now God didn't stop the serpents from biting, but God stopped them from dying. And the question is on the floor, can God conquer death? And you think you're just reading us a, 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 a subject matter about them being in the wilderness and them being uh, rebellious and, and stubborn and stiff-necked, but what you're really reading about is God conquering death. Now the serpent still bit them, but if they looked upon that brazen pole, they were going to live. Oh, that's example after example of God conquering death. And this is what he said in John chapter 3, verse 13. And no man has ascended unto heaven, but unto him that came down from heaven, even the Son, which is from heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just like that brazen serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, Christ was lifted up by the cross. And anybody that believed in him and be obedient to him, just like that serpent could save, if you, if you, if you uh, gazed upon that serpent, Christ could save if you are obedient to him. It's the same thing. It's example after example of God conquering death. I know what you think. You think, well, there couldn't possibly be another example. Well, let me tell you about Daniel chapter 6. You recall, of course, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And who can survive a ravenous lion? And in Daniel 6, 17, and the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it upon his signet, and the signet of the Lord's and the purpose, purpose might be not changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to the palace and passed the night fasting, and with his instruments of music he brought for him, for his sleep went from him. And then they arose very early in the morning and went to the den. And when he had come to the den, he cried with a lament lamentationable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said, Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, whom thou servest continually, 
able, continually able to deliver thee from the lion's den? Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angels and has shut the mouth of the lions that they have not hurt me for as much as before that he, because I am innocent and was found, no innocent was found in me. And before thee, O king, I have done no, it has done no hurt. God saved Daniel from the lion's den. What I'm trying to show you over and over and over again, these aren't just stories. These are examples of what God can do. And God can save me from dying, and God save you from dying. But it's not a physical death, because death thou art. And, and by dust thou art, and dust thou shall return. But it's a spiritual death. We're all going to die physically, but we do not have to die spiritually. And the only way that can happen is that you, unless you be on the Lord's side. But let me give you one more example. You recall Lazarus, of course. By now, he stinketh. Four days by now, he stinketh. And they had buried Lazarus, and Jesus had taken his time coming to the sepulcher. And when he got there, Martha and Mary said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus wept. You know what that shows? That shows the humanity part of Jesus. That shows that Jesus took on the form of a man. That shows that Jesus can have feelings and, and aches and pains just like we have. But let me tell you what he did in John eleven thirty eight. Then Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, coming to the grave where it was, it was a cave and the stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him, that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. And he said, he had been dead for four days. And Jesus said unto her, did I not say unto thee, if thou wouldst believe it, thou should see the glory of God? And they took away the stone and from the place of the dead. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me and, and knew that th I know that thou heareth me always because of the people I said to standing by. And with a loud voice, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Man. You know what that showed? That showed his divinity. That showed his God side. Oh, he was all man, yet he was all God. Because nobody can tell anybody to come out of the grave, and they come out of the grave unless you be the son of God. Man. And what that showed was that God can conquer death. Yeah. Oh, and that's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. But I'm going to tell you, it's only one place where he conquers it. I know he conquers it. And I give you examples after examples after examples, but there's only one place where God conquers death, and that's in Christ Jesus. Man. Everything else out of Christ will be lost, but everything in Christ will be saved. And the only way you can be conquered, only way death can uh, uh, you can conquer death is through Jesus Christ. Man. That's why he said in 2 Timothy 2:10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus. Before the foundation of the world, God decided that if anybody was going to be saved, it was going to be in Christ. Not Buddha, not Bohemian, not Confucius, not your pastor, not your reverend, but in Christ Jesus. Man. The only place where death can be conquered mm -hmm. is in Christ Jesus. Oh, it's a wonderful plan. Yeah. And nobody knew it. You thought when you were reading all of these stories in the Old Testament, you were just reading about some quaint story. But what God was showing you, how he was going to conquer death in Christ Jesus. Oh, it sounds great to me. And Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Jesus. Man. All spiritual blessings are one place, mm -hmm. and that's in Christ. And that's why he said in Ephesians 1, 4, according that he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. This was God's plan before there was even said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. Before he, he divided the waters from the, from the firmaments, he had a plan, and the plan was he was going to conquer death in one place and one place only, and that's in Christ Jesus. Man. And that's why he said in Revelation 14 and verse 13, Blessed be the dead who die in the Lord, for henceforth, yea, the Spirit says, that they may rest from their labors and their works through followers. Follow them. Blessed be the dead who die where? 
in the Lord. Now, I know what you're thinking. You think, well, if salvation is in Christ, and they're blessed who are in Christ, and, and all spiritual blessings are in Christ, how do I get into Jesus Christ? Well, I'm going to answer that for you. Well, what you have to do is you have to hear his word, Romans 10, 17. Then you have to believe what he says, Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith it's impossible to please him. He that come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. And then you're going to have to repent. Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And you're going to have to confess boldly in front of me or in front of anybody that will listen that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And then you complete your obedience by going down into a liquid grave of baptism and being raised and walk in the newness of life. That's why Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. And that will put you into Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 3, 27. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Man. That's the only way you can get into Christ. And that's the only way that you can be saved from death. Because God can conquer death. Man. If you haven't been conquered, God has not conquered your death. You need to get a hold of us here at the Church of Christ at Washington Park. We'll be happy to facilitate in any way we can. But keep in mind, only one person can conquer death. That's God, and he only does it by one person. That's Jesus Christ. Amen.